And as coordinating judge, you do the first filtration. I'm the first filter. So yeah, I, we, myself, Larry Niven, uh, Greg Benford, uh, Nancy Crest, the other judges, we see what you think is the best of the best. Yeah. And then we each vote in private without consultation, uh, and the scores are aggregated and the winner is found. On any given quarter, I typically find 25 to 40 stories that I think could be um, publishable, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, some of them might need a little bit of tweaking or editing here and there, but uh, but I find a, a lot of good stories, and so I try to send you the very best of the best. Sometimes that's a really difficult job. For example, I'll get a, a ghost story, and I may have six ghost stories, right. and so I've got to choose which are the which is the best of these ghost stories, and uh, and I have to cross my fingers sometimes. I, I have one story in particular a couple of years ago that was a comedy, and I had another comedy that was very similar, mm -hmm. and I'm kicking myself to this day for not taking that other story uh, too. Yes, <laughs> so was the say, author, I'm sure. Uh, I mean, yeah, <laughs> we try to take the very best of the best and, and uh, push those forward. And sometimes you'll take a story and you'll go, gosh, um, I, I would really like to push this person because I can see a whole lot of potential mm -hmm. and I hope that they enter the contest again mm -hmm. and, and uh, don't pro out as we call it where suddenly they've got so many pro sales that we can't, uh, we can't bring them in. Well, the way that you did. Yes, that's right. I, I proed out early on. That's right. Yeah. I forget what the threshold was. Was it three at that time? I three don't know. stories, yeah. Three stories that I'd sold, and uh, so I wasn't able to enter anymore. Um, but there was no doubt that in those early days, having the deadline, mm -hmm. having the carrot of, you know, it was yes. real money, it yeah. still is real money, mm -hmm. uh, was very motivating. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, I think, knowing, talking to lots of beginning writers, they're writers who tinker endlessly with one story. Mm -hmm. And a career, unless you're Daniel Keyes who wrote Flowers for Altron, yeah. unless you're that one complete <laughs> outlier, a career's not made on one work. Yeah. A career's made on a body of work. And this contest, we have so many people who, when they get up on stage, and we don't know this until they're up on stage. Uh, I mean, yeah. this is my 12th time, this is my fifth time I've entered, and now I finally made it, mm -hmm. which meant that they created 12, 5, 8 different works mm -hmm. instead of so many beginning authors who just, well, they keep doing the same story and they'll send it out, it's rejected, they revise the same one. No, no, this forces people not only to a rhythm of writing every 90 days, but something new every 90 days. Yes. And they learn, really, that's the, the greatest thing you learn, whether you ever win or not, from mm -hmm. being involved with this contest, is you have to produce on a regular basis to deadline if you want to make it as a professional writer. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you.